Steroids, interesting topic in wrestling, and something that's always going to be there, no matter what. Now, if they didn't have enough, they have this. If the same little current affair that was originally scheduled on April 21st didn't air, they spent a few there on April 28th. The show did numerous interviews during the week, including one here with Dave, and then see possible with scheduled interviews with Jim Stewart and Rita Chatterton, and possibly even Vincent Man on April 20th and Bruno Sammartino on April 21st had the piece ready for the originally scheduled airing. In a related story, depositions in the Murray Hodgson lawsuit against Titan Sports are scheduled to be taken starting later this week. Uh. <laughs> the Hodgson case is most interesting because unlike the Billy Graham case and some of the other cases where it's pretty well understood what happened, the question is whether or not and what the legal responsibility and to whom the steroids did cause Graham's first physical damage, the Hodgson case is much different. But the ability for him to prove that he was fired for his claim of turn down in advance by Pat Patterson seems almost impossible, given that nobody in Titan will back it up. As talking with several lawyers, if Hodgson is telling the complete truth, his chances of winning are very strong. At the lengthy discussion with Hodgson and previous talks with Vincent Man and Steve Plantamento on the subject of the case, we have two completely diverse stories. This is basically the same story. Each person slants in their direction. One side is lying big time. I mean, one of these sides is on Fantasy Island. The play, boss, the play. The <laughs> fact that one side also has a track record of being on or near Fantasy Island on a lot of controversial issues, and sometimes even writing scripts for Fantasy Island, and the other side is an unknown certain, certainly, makes it easy to believe one side over the other. But don't waste a minute here worrying about hunches, believability, and sympathy here. This will be an open and shut case, and it'll be obvious just where it opens and shuts if it ever goes to court, because whichever side is telling the sh- truth should be able to easily document it. Both McMahon and Hodgson have made many on record statements, particularly on Larry King. Hodgson on Larry King's radio show the night McMahon was on television, and Phil Donahue that completely contradicted the other. If it was McMahon who was lying on those shows and considering what he said on King, in some cases, contradicted what he said on Donahue, he'll be called like a Thanksgiving turkey in the courtroom. If Hodgson was, then he will be. Well, a key point to prove who is honest can't be brought up because settlement discussions can't be brought up if something goes scored. If Hodgson asked for $106,000 of sum at the morning of Donahue, his credibility is in question because he specifically denied it. He did confirm he and Rene Dubose, Rene, director of human resources at Titan, talked that morning with a talk initiated by Dubose, which he constituted as trying to keep him from going on the show, but that no figure was ever discussed. He specifically said that Dubose asked him to put down in writing a figure that day, send it to them, and then decide if they're accepted or not. That almost sounds like a trick to get Hodgson to put some in writing. Hodgson's lawyer was on vacation that day, and the man could pull that out later that afternoon live on television, similar to the apparent trick when Lee Cole, older brother of Tom Cole, called up Barry Orton's sister on a Sunday night after they had sold their issue and told Barry's sister that it'd be okay for Barry to talk about Tom on the Donahue show, which was set up since the man had Cole stationed in the audience for when Orton brought the name up. But Orton didn't fall for the bait. This is tremendous. On Donahue, McMahon gave a specific figure, which is either a factual statement or an outright lie. No in between. And one that can be easy, easily documented on, on the one on way or the one way or the other. In the green room at Donahue, Hodgson was going nuts in front of only myself and maybe two or three others about how the $106,000 figure was totally made up. And he also did have a short verbal conversation with McMahon after the show was over. One Titan employee talked with me the Wednesday after Donahue aired and said that man was telling the truth and documented evidence in his coat. He couldn't figure out why Vince didn't pull it out. Insert your pull out jokes there. That's hard to believe, however, because Hodgson ate him alive on the show. And if he had documented evidence to prove Hodgson a liar, it's hard to believe he had never brought it up. The other and more important aspect of the case is this. Since it's a major issue, according to both lawyers they spoke with in regarding the case, McMahon stated specifically on Donahue that it took Hodgson six months to come forward and bring up the charge. Hodgson said he had an emotional talk with McMahon just a few days after being fired, with McMahon blowing him off. Nice choice of words. Instead, his lawyer sent McMahon a letter within two weeks. Obviously, he will have a copy of that letter if a letter, such a letter exists. From what Dave was told, this is way out of his range of knowledge, juries are very unsympathetic in cases like this, and employers ignoring claims of this type without investigating. And if there's no letter, because there's no way the lawyer wouldn't have kept such a letter on file, that says a man was the one telling the truth in this instance. This case will never go to the jury anyway, even though both sides have said they want to go all the way with it. All right, let me, we're going to stop right here. Yeah, there's a uh, lot. There's a lot to digest here. All right, Bix. <laughs> we'll go to you first. Uh, 
we've talked about that Donahue show before on here, and we'll, we'll have more on it in a minute. But uh, wow, that, that there needs to be like a documentary on that whole fucking experience right there. There's so much shit that happened on that thing, but in front of the camera, behind the camera. My goodness. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, one of the things I believe Meltzer talks about is that. I think Vince says something to him during a commercial break, like, why couldn't Murray talk like that when he worked for us? <laughs> <laughs> he got a fucking phenomenal promo on Donahue, but couldn't do his job in fucking Stamford. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, I do actually have, because it was right. Oh, God damn, pal. Oh. <laughs> do, would you like me to read the letter that he sent about potential uh sure why not okay so this is from okay what date is this this is from a, several weeks okay this is from about a month later in john arezzi's pro wrestling spotlight newsletter which someone who may or may not be on this call is was involved with getting us a copy of this uh hmm. well, now i lost my place hold on because i scrolled up to check the date but he okay here's here's what john arezzi writes hodgson dismisses the letter murray hodgson a central figure in the wwf sex scandal controversy has dismissed a, ris a recent letter he sent to titan sports ceo vince mcmahon as irrelevant the letter asks mcmahon to use him in the upcoming wbf personal fist fitness expo hodgson is currently involved in a legal battle with titan sports he's suing the company for blah, blah 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 okay uh so this is the letter which WWF also made available to Current Affair, and they read excerpts of it when they did the story. The second annual WBF Championship is coming up soon, and I'd like to offer my services as host of the Personal Fitness Expo and as announcer for the live event, much the same as my duties last year in Atlantic City. There is nothing like consistency, and no doubt my reputation precedes itself with the World Bodybuilding Federation. Pregnant pause to insert joke here. Uh, everyone from your wife Linda to Jonathan Flora Retta Logan and Pete Kleinschmidt all spoke very highly of my performance last year. Oh, uh, but you just dropped some names there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and the producers of the live show were emphatic about wanting my voice exclusively for their show. Obviously, I have a lot of spare time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and this would be a great opportunity for me to make some extra money as well. It would also give you the reassurance that the job will be done in a fashion expected of such a first-rate production. If you would like to discuss details, I'd love to talk with somebody from your office. I remember in our meeting last August, 1991, you mentioned that you would like to use me for occasional freelance voice work, and this seems like the best place to start. I look forward to hearing from your office at your leisure. Best of luck and continued success with the WBF. Back to John. Holy shit, that's the first time I've ever heard of that letter existing <laughs> and like if if he wasn't all if they had if they, they had not already decided they're not using this motherfucker ever again <laughs> that's reason to fucking fire him all he's doing is trying to kiss ass and drop names and say this person wants me on the show and this person wants me on the show and it, what the fuck fuck you dude no <laughs> you're fired exactly did uh, we book you? No, and you're not, you're not getting booked either. <laughs> so, okay, there, there's more though from John. Since the public disclosure of this letter, Hodgson has come under criticism for those covering the story who wonder why he would send such a request to a man he was trying to sue. In a conversation I had with him on May second, Murray blew it off. That was nothing, he said. The letter's point. Wait, 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 wait. He blew it off. Hold, hold, hold on, word. hold on. He sent this letter after he threatened to sue them for the Patterson thing. Yeah, no? because, I mean, if it's the second annual <laughs> WBF championship is coming. Wait a second. The WBF, what? The, 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 the He's second still annual WBF, trying to get booked well, remember after the second, he fucking threatened to sue them <laughs> for a completely made up fucking story with Pat Patterson. <laughs> this guy is insane. Anyway, continue. Well, it, gets, it gets better, though, too. Um, it's so shit, uh, No, remember, though, the second annual WBF championship has not happened yet. Oh yeah. God. That that's not till June. Uh, that was nothing he said. The letter's point was to prove how positive the people in the company thought of me last year. Murray was upset that a current affair didn't read the entire letter. It makes it sound as if I'm begging for my job back, which is the furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> and well, <laughs> here's an update to, to, to depositions. For, for the case have been postponed from an initial date of April 24th because, according to Hodgson, McMahon's attorneys couldn't be admitted to the state of Connecticut because they are not Connecticut lawyers. Titan is bringing in some out-of-state lawyers to do battle in the, in the case, 
and they have to be admitted to the in the state through a motion in the Connecticut courts. Which, first of all, I've read enough court dockets by this point to know that, like, if you have lawyers representing you that are out of state, their motion to be admitted into that jurisdiction is, like, the first thing they do after filing the complaint. So, or, or responding, you know, to the complaint if they're the defense. But, all right, it, is it time for me to explain to everyone what ends up happening with Murray Hodgson, or do we need to... No, no, explain? let's continue. We got more, we got more, we got more. I mean, is there anything else from even what we went over so far, or... Uh, there's, there's, well, I mean, there's one little bit of, let me, let me read the last paragraph okay. here, and then, and then we could tie the, the bow on this. On Thursday, Steve Planamena said, we don't believe there's much truth to what he's saying. He's telling people we're trying to buy him off. The morning of Donahue's show, he called Renee DeBose and said, I want $106,000 or I'm going on a Donahue show. He goes on the show and tries to change the subject when Vince brings it up. The guy is lying through his teeth. He has no case and he knows he has no case. We're doing everything we can to get him under oath. He's spreading all this bullshit. When we get him under oath, we'll, we'll see a different Murray Hodgson, if that's even his real name. <laughs> <laughs> he falsified documents with us. He claimed a one-year period of negotiation. We did a search and brought him in for an interview a few times. We just thought we weren't going to fill the position. A year later, we started another search, and his name came up again. Hodgson stated specifically he was offered a contract in 1990, and they spent a year negotiating before he ever came in. This character assassination stuff is getting funny, Hodgson said in response. Planamena said that under advice from the company's lawyers, he's been instructed to not comment on anything related to the Rita Chatterton case. Well, that's a whole different story. All right, Bix, what happens with Murray Hodgson? Okay. If that's even his real name. Well, it is his real name. Is his real <laughs> last name Bischoff? Because he certainly <laughs> looks like Eric. <laughs> they both went to the John Davidson School of Television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vic's dropping a, a, a nice old name from the past. I love it. John Davidson. And Google it, kids. As Jerry McDevitt explained it to me. Your friend, Jerry McDevitt, yes. And for this type of thing, for this type of thing, I would think he's fairly credible, given what we know. Uh, they get him under oath. The big reason they wanted to get him under oath was that they had found, I believe, the main two things were one, he had done this before. Oh, so they already he, knew. They already knew before this thing. Okay. They knew Keep by going. the point they deposed him. They okay. they just laid it all out in front of him. So. They knew that he had done this before, and the also got, I forget if, if it was his boyfriend or his ex-boyfriend, to explain how they liked to go to gay bars, find closeted guys, and then blackmail them. Yep. So so did this thing ever actually go to court? Um, As in, like, there's no trial. Like, like I, 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 don't, I don't recall... From, I mean, granted, I was doing my hugely successful newsletter with 50 subscribers <laughs> yes. at the time. But, like, I, I don't remember ever hearing any stories of Murray Hodgson versus the WWF in court. So did it? Did the, did the trial never happen? There's no trial, but he keeps it going in some form for a while. Like, you can find, I think it's just on Court Listener, and unfortunately none of it, the rest of it exists anymore. Like, there, he's pushing stuff in court late into 94. But nothing ever really, nothing ever comes of it because people realize that he's a fucking nutcase, fucking pathological liar who made shit up. Yeah, and according to... Who has uh, a history of doing this to other people in the past. And he thought that, hey, I discovered Pat Patterson is gay, so therefore, tons of money's in my future. No, sorry, bro, it's not. And then, again, tell everybody, Bix, what Murray Hodgson does now. He promotes drag shows and other gay-oriented <laughs> entertainment events. There you go. At least he's happy. Yes. Well, I I I uh I don't even remember how I fucking. All right. So si sidetrack. Um, the Shimmer Twitter account follows everybody. Uh, just follow everybody who might follow back. And so I just follow lots of random shit just for the fuck of it to see who follows back. And for whatever reason, I found the club that Murray Hodgson currently books talent for and followed it. And Brett Lauderdale asked me about two weeks later, Hey, do you know Murray Hodgson? I'm like, no. 
No, he's like, but I see that it's one of the mutual friends on on Twitter, the Shimmer. And I'm like, yeah, the Shimmer account follows everybody. I've got seventy nine thousand fucking people that I'm following, but no, no, it was just I was probably bored that day and uh, had rewatched the Donahue show on YouTube or something, <laughs> and did a search for Murray Hodgson and followed whatever. Which is also Dude, funny. Fuck, it's... fuck this guy. He's a complete fucking liar. Well, I don't think I had talked to you about this. Which it's just extra funny because, of course, Brett also messaged me once he saw all this. So that closes a loop right there. So wait, so is he friends with Murray Hodgson? Brett? I don't think he's trying to book him for spring break or anything. No, 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 no. Just Mantar. Man, man, man. Hold on. I'm trying to find. I do have some. I'm trying to find. There's a thing. There's a thing where Murray Hodgson basically drops his lawyer when he finds out he's gay. Mm. And I'm trying to see if I can find it because I don't know if I have that. Separated. But as, as soon as as soon as he realized that everybody on the WWF side knew that he had done this before and he had a track record for trying to blackmail people. He didn't know that. Then he that then he, he should have. Oh, he didn't. Okay, he should have known that he was fucked. But no, according to one Jerry McDavid. Um, on the video, you could clearly see Hodgson, after having already finished his water, being so out of it and so gobsmacked that he repeatedly tries to drink and gulp down water from an empty glass. <laughs> oh, uh, what, a, what a treasure Murray Hodgson is, I tell you. Yeah, and also, they had, they had plans to run this stuff in WWF Magazine, too, remember? Because they yeah. did the now it's our turn thing about Superstar Graham. And I guess the lawyers told them never to do anything like that again. But that one ends with, beginning in early 1992, the gossip sheets printed the tales of Tom Cole, Murray Hodgson, David Schultz, Rita Marie Chatterton, and other unnamed sources pointing the finger at sex scandals within Titan Sports Inc. and the World Wrestling Federation. In upcoming issues, we will provide the facts on that cast of characters. Why right. even remind people? Like... Yeah, it hit like probably New York and like a couple a couple of different areas, but it, on the the majority of fans of the WWF at this time had no idea that this show was going. Yeah, because it was only yeah. New York and daytime talk and tabloid show. Yeah, and pe people that's people that happened to watch that week's Don, you know, that day's Donahue and that day's Larry King. That's it. Like it was it wasn't a major. A major story so uh, even if the even if the lawyers hadn't advised to not bring it up in the magazine that would have been a mistake anyway and the thing is what percentage of wrestling fans are watching donahue yeah and that's just that's like housewives like yeah it's, yeah gentle has prowls prowls stuff like that you know watching donahue you know and when I, as soon as I got home from school, hitting recording, <laughs> so that I could get Dave Meltzer on videotape. Yes. Okay. Well, also, let's and uh, his great hair. Yeah. <laughs> and his better suit than Vince McMahon. <laughs> and John Arezzi and his sunglasses. <laughs> well, here is Jerry McDevitt himself in an affidavit he files in the. Uh, I believe both the New York Post slash Phil Mushnick and the Geraldo slash David Schultz slash Rita Chatterton lawsuits. Uh, so this is three months after all the talk shows. Uh, Hodgson was questioned under oath in the pre presence of his counsel in the lawsuit he filed. After being cross-examined for a few hours, his attorney at the time, Mr. Ed Nussbaum, expressed his apologies to Linda McMahon in my presence and in the presence of our local counsel, Mary Gambardella for the harm that he had done to Mr. Patterson, asked what he could do to help Mr. Patterson get his job back, and indicated he would no longer represent Mr. Hodgson. This is how we've always heard this, too, that his lawyer, upon hearing all this, apo immediately apologizes to everyone, shakes their hands, and leaves, basically. <laughs> uh, Hodgson was shown to be a man of no honor who would also say, who would say whatever suited his purpose, a fact which is matter of judicial record. Um, it says see Exhibit 35, which I think is the letter I was talking about. Hudson also admitted in his, in his deposition that he made the same claim against another homosexual in the past. After Mr. Nussbaum got out of the case, Mr. Hodgson went without counsel and could find nobody to take his case. A few months ago, he managed to get a new attorney 
who he in turn fired in a remarkably cruel way. Citing problems with his lawyer's, alt- quote, alternative lifestyle in a letter he sent to opposing counsel, <laughs> Hodgson recently fired his second attorney. What a gem. This fucking guy. Yeah. I'm unfollowing him on Twitter. <laughs> I don't think he's a con man anymore. <laughs> not at all. No, of course not. Why would he be a con man? I wonder if he knows John Collins. <laughs> Common and wrestling, come on. <laughs> really? Never, never. Never. All right, they also attach, they attach some lawsuit where he's... Or a Larry Burtman <laughs> from Memphis, <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> and all of his aliases. <laughs> yes. House Bear <laughs> <laughs> Uh Okay, yes, this was... Some some like concert promoter or something sued him too over oh, what was it like an Ario Speedwagon concert or something? Not going off the way it should have. Why? Because they're all gay? <laughs> <laughs> or, or Kevin Cron No, the best one about the Ario Speedwagon concert is like or anything with Ario Speedwagon is Kevin Cronin constantly talk the least thing or constantly trying to uh, convince people he's not gay. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. This is Thomas E. Hodgson, who I'm sure is no relation to. Good lord! Hold on. I really hope. Okay, Kevin Cronin. Here we go. Here, here is the letter from October twenty first, nineteen ninety three. Confidential via fax. Dear Samuel, this is to his lawyer Samuel D. Bush of Stanford. Uh, Re Hodgson v. Titan Sports Inc. Please be advised that as of this date, your services are att- of attor- as attorney of record for the above mentioned case are terminated. I expect your motion to withdraw your counsel immediately. Your alternative lifestyle has caused a great burden on the process on the excuse me, the progress of this case. Further, your refusal to return phone calls, respond to requests, and conducting yourself in an unethical manner is something that must be taken up with the statewide bar council of Connecticut. Also, your numerous Procedural errors, incomplete revisions of on the substitute complaint, case dismissal letter, and concealed delays and problems confirming Titan Sports depositions has left me with an inescapable conclusion that no doubt your ability to properly and effectively litigate this matter, you know, please return documents, tapes, blah, blah, blah. Be advised I will be present before the court for your motion to withdraw. To justify to the judge, while I feel your motion should be granted in the unlikely event he has a problem with it, finally note that my account balance with you is zero dollars. <laughs> your complete cooperation is anticipated please govern yourself accordingly respectively Murray Hodgson CC Mary Gambardella Jerry McDevitt respectfully <laughs> I don't trust you in this lawsuit because you're gay by the way I'm a complete <laughs> fucking liar yeah. Yeah. oh man yeah this is you see, it's entertainment like this. Like you, you wonder, like, what is Murray Hodgson doing today? That's that's probably why I fucking found. <laughs> I found whatever club he's like. He's in charge of booking acts at some club in Michigan. I think it was. That's where he's from and, originally. Yeah. Yeah, and so I followed that that venue. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe it'll be a pro wrestling venue, and then one day. Maybe some show will be booked at this place, and I could run into him and be like, "Hey, Murray Hodgson, what's up?" Pat says, <laughs> he's, he's booking shows with Briar Wellington, <laughs> DBA, <laughs> Mister Insanity, Toby Klein, uh, <laughs> Bobo Brown, oh. yeah. <laughs> all the greats of Michigan past, <laughs> Mickey Doyle. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, let's get to the wrestling side of things. Uh, oh. okay. but, yeah, I mean, I'm not to, fucking Murray Hodgson. I need I mean, to take a shower after that fucking conversation. 